I'm what you would call a collector of bootleg Pokemon games. Pokemon Diamond and Jade, Chaos Black, etc. It's an amazing frequency with which you can find them at pawn shops, Goodwill, flea markets, and all that sort of stuff. They're generally fun, even if they are unplayable, which, being quite honest, they often are. They, the mistranslations in poor quality make them quite unintentionally hilarious. I've been able to find most of the ones I've played online, but there's just there's one that I haven't seen any mention of. I bought it at a flea market about mm, four or five years ago. Here's a picture of the cartridge, in case anyone else recognizes it. Unfortunately, when I moved two years ago, I, I lost the game, so I can't provide you with any scream caps to go along with it. Sorry. The game started with the familiar Nidorino and Gengar. Intro the red and blue versions. However, the press start screen had been... altered. Red was there, but the Pokemon did not cycle through. It also said, black version, under the new Pokemon logo. Upon selecting new game, the game started with the typical Professor Oak speech, and it quickly became evident that the game was essentially Pokemon Red version, which I wasn't exactly complaining because Red version was awesome. After selecting your starter, if you looked at your Pokemon, you had an addition to Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle, Another Pokemon. Ghost. The Pokemon was level 1, and it had a sprite of the ghost that you encountered in Lavender Town before obtaining the Sylphoscope. It had but one attack. Curse. I know that there's a real move named Curse, but that attack did not exist in Generation 1, so I just supposed it had been hacked in. Defending Pokemon were unable to attack Ghost. It would only say they were too scared to move. When the move Curse was used in battle, the screen would fade to black. The cry of the defending Pokemon would be heard, but it was distorted, played a much darker pitch than normal. The battle screen would reappear, and the defending Pokemon would be missing. If used in a battle against a trainer, the when the Pokeballs representing their Pokemon would appear in the corner, they would have one fewer Pokeball. I became dreadfully aware that the implication was that the Pokemon had been... murdered. What's even stranger is that after defeating a trainer and seeing the Red receive $200 for winning, the battle commands would appear once more. If you selected Run, the battle would end as it normally does. But you could also select a curse. If you did, upon returning to the overworld, the trainer's sprite would now be gone. After leaving and re entering the area, the spot where the trainer had been would be replaced with a tombstone, just like the ones from Lavender Tower. Of course, the move curse was not entirely usable in all instances. It would fail against ghost Pokemon. It was also fail if it was used against a character you would have to face again, such as Rival or Giovanni. It was usable in your final battle against them, however. I figured that this was a gimmick of the game, allowing to use previously uncatchable ghosts. And because curse made the game so easy, I essentially used it throughout the entire adventure. The game changed quite a bit after I defeated the Elite Four. After viewing the Hall of Fame, which consisted of ghosts and a couple of Pokemon I used for HMs, the screen cut to black. A box appeared with the words, many years later. It then cut to Lavender Tower. An old man was standing, looking at the tombstones. You dreadfully became aware that this man was your character. The man moved at only half of your normal walking speed. You no longer had any of your Pokemon with you, not even Ghost, who up to this point had been impossible to remove from your party, even through depositing in the PC. The overworld was eerily empty. There were no 
people at all. There were still tombstones of the trainers that you used to curse on, which left a dark image in my mind. You could go pretty much anywhere in the overworld at this point, though your movement was limited by the fact that you had no more Pokemon to use HMs with. And regardless of where you went, the dark music of Lavender Town continued on an infinite, frightening loop. I, after wandering for a while, I found that if you go through Diglett's Cave, one of the cuttable bushes that normally blocks the path was no longer there, allowing you to return to Pallet Town. Upon entering your house and going to the exact tile where you started the game, the screen would fade to black again. Then a sprite of Caterpie appeared, replaced by a Weedle, then a Pidgey. I soon realized as the Pokemon progressed from Rattata to Blastoise that these were all of the Pokemon that I had used Curse on. After the end of my rival's team, a youngster appeared, and then Bugcatcher. I realized that these were the trainers that I had cursed. Killed, as the case may be. Throughout this sequence, the Lavender Town music just kept playing, but it was slowly, slowly decreasing in pitch. By the time your rival appeared on the screen, it was more of a demonic rumble! Another cut to black. A few minutes later, the battle screen suddenly appeared. Your trainer, Sprite, was now that of an old man. The same one who teaches you the how to catch Pokemon in Viridian City. Ghosts appeared on the other side, along the, with the words, Ghost wants to fight. You couldn't use items, and you had no Pokemon. If you tried to run, you couldn't escape. The only option was to fight. Using fight would immediately cause you to use struggle, which didn't affect Ghost, but could chip off a bit of your own health points. When it was Ghost's turn to attack, it would s simply say, dot, 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 nothing. Eventually, when your HP reached a critical point, the Ghost would finally use the move, Curse. The screen would cut to black for what would be the last time. Regardless of the buttons you pressed, you were permanently stuck at this black screen. At this point, the only thing you could do was turn the whole game off. When you played again, there was the new game as the only option, and your last file had been erased. I played through this hat game many, many, many times, and every time, the game always ended with this wicked sequence, this vile trick. Several times, I didn't even use Ghost at all, though he was impossible to remove from the party. In these cases, I, it did not show any Pokemon or trainers, and just simply cut to the climactic battle that killed you with Ghost. And I'm not sure what the motives were behind the creator of this hack. It wasn't widely distributed, so I was presumably not for any sort of monetary gain. It was so disturbingly done for a bootleg. It seems he was trying to convey some sort of message, though it seems I am the sole receiver of this message. I'm not entirely sure. But the, inevit the inevitability of death? The pointlessness of life? Perhaps he was simply trying to morbidly inject death and darkness into some child's game that I was just trying to enjoy. Regardless, this, this children's game has made me think 